Hello, my name is Eric, a member of the support team here at Prototech. In this video, we're going to take a look at the multi-axis curve toolpath. Multi-axis curve is very similar to SWARF. I kind of consider it like a multi-axis version of contour, but it does have many options in it. I've used SWARF to finish the wall and unified to finish the floor, and I've already done some roughing. Unlike SWARF, Curve isn't stuck to the wall. SWARF wants to always touch both the upper and lower rail. Curve works off of one chain, and then I have my various multi-axis axis controls, which then allow me to tilt away from the wall, gaining clearance while trying to 3D out this corner fillet. Before I make my toolpath, I'm going to create some axis control lines. I'm going to use the wire frame curve flow line tool for this. I pick the face and then over here I'm going to do it by a number. If I was going to be cutting the wall I would probably want several control lines but I'm just going to use these lines as a starting point and then I'm going to tilt additionally from there to get clearance off that wall so I don't need as many lines. I'll do five and if the lines in the wrong direction I can change my UV direction but they're correct at U. I'm going to green check to draw my lines. Now I can create my toolpath. In the multi-axis menu, I can pick curve. I'm going to pick this eighth inch ball end mill. And here I can pick the chain I want to follow. I'm going to use solid chaining. I'm going to reset my cutter comp here so it gets at half of my tool diameter. Tighten up my tolerance a little bit. For tool axis control, I'm going to pick axis control lines. I have a variety of different axis control methods. I want to pick the lines that I just drew with the arrows pointing towards the Z positive direction of the tool orientation. And now here, I can add some additional tilt. I'm going to add an additional 10 degrees to that. That should give me clearance away from that wall. Instead of driving the depth from that chain, I want to keep the tool at that corner fillet. I'm going to be 3D in that corner. I'm going to also add some entry exit. At the beginning of the cut, I'm going to have an arc-like move in. So I am going to add a length and a thickness. It kind of averages out the two, gives me an arc-like move. But at the exit, I want to come out straight. I don't have much room at the tip of that impeller. So I'll just use a length. Because my corner radius is not a nominal size, I'm gonna add a couple passes. I'm gonna do five passes at an eighth house step over. So there's my roll in at the beginning, and then I just came out tangentially at the end. If I backplot this, I can see that I have my extra 10 degrees of clearance off of that wall so I can fit my tool in there without rubbing and chattering. I'm also going to take a look at this in machine simulation. I'm going to hide my machine housing so I can see what's going on a little better. It'll run my swore first and then my curve. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can catch our videos as soon as we release them. Thanks for watching.